Hi, this is Soma. Uh, welcome to the video module on how to use CMake to compile your C++ project. CMake is a free uh, open source software that you can download from the internet. Once you have it downloaded, uh, you're ready to go. And CMake identifies uh, which library, uh, which compiler you're using on your system and makes it a lot smoother when you're working collaboratively with uh, maybe team members that have different compilers. So if you're running MinGW on Windows, uh, or Sigwin um, on a Unix system. Basically, it'll allow you to neglect these discrepancies between compilers and make the process of collaboration much smoother. Some examples of it in use in the industry include Netflix, NREA, HDF Group, etc. Once you've downloaded and installed it, we're going to create a simple Hello World project. Uh, in C++. If you already know how to do this, go to the description and you can find the timestamp where the CMake uh, part of the video begins. I'm going to be using uh, Mac OS and Terminal to do all of this and on the right you can see basically what is happening visually. I recommend that you follow along these steps so that you can get used to the environment of developing inside your terminal. First, I want to create a header file called hello.hpp and inside of this I'm going to include uh, the IO string and inside of here I'm going to declare namespace hello. This is going to be the hello library and it will contain a function with no return value also called hello and it will have no input parameters either so now that you have this you can save that and on the right here it is okay now we want to create the source file so I'm going to type in hello.cpp uh, vi is uh, for Mac OS if you're using Linux or Windows I think it's VM or Vim uh, you can look into that and there will be resources online. So inside of here, I'm going to include iostream once again, and also include the hello.hpp header file, and I will initialize the function hello within the hello library. And this function is basically just going to output hello world to the console um, and then we'll add an endline character and that will be the end of this function. Now we have a header file, a source file. Now we want the uh, source file containing the main function so that we can compile that and it can reference the library. So we're just going to call it main.cpp and inside of here we'll once again include the IO string include uh, the header file so hello.hpp and then initialize the main and inside the main call the hello function from the hello library and then return zero to mark the end of the program. So now we have a header file for the library, the source file for that library, and we have uh, the main source file containing uh, the main function. So this is where CMake is gonna come in. Uh, normally you would do something like G++, uh, actually I'll do it right here, .cpp and hello.hpp uh, actually g++ uh, main.cpp and hello.cpp and it will create a a.out file which we can then call and it will type out hello world but uh, this is only going to work on your specific console and if you have a different compiler that is not identified by your console or is not within your system, this is where the discrepancy 
and the different errors and the different uh, steps to accommodate for this are going to come in. This is where CMake is going to make it a lot easier uh, for larger projects with many dependencies and learning this now will future-proof uh, future you for this. So in order to use CMake, we'll identify the version we're making or the version we're using by saying CMake version and we have 3.14.0. Uh, now we can create a CMake list text file. So we're going to say by CMake lists dot text. And this has to be spelled correctly like so and capitalized exactly like it's spelled here. And in this text file we're going to put all our CMake code. The first is we're going to set the minimum version um, so that there's a standard between uh, the different CMake versions that exist. Okay, so by, uh, you can do this by saying uh, CMake underscore minimum underscore required. And then we'll type in version. And since I was using 3.4, I'll just say 3.0 in case someone who else who wants to work on this has a lower version. Now we're going to name this project. I'm just going to name it Hello CMake. And we want to add executable. And in this, we're going to specify what the output file is going to be named. I'm just going to name it Hello CMake. And which is the file to compile, uh, which I've named main.cpp because that where the main function exists. Now add underscore table, uh, not table, library, and inside the uh, add library command, we're going to type in the name of the library. I'm just going to name it hello because that's all it does. And then we're going to specify all the dependent files to this library. So remember that it has a header file and a source file that we've created. Okay, so now we're telling CMake that this is the main executable, which is the main.cpp, and we're adding a library hello and with the dependent files within it. Now we want to link these two together. So in order to do this, we want to do target underscore link underscore libraries. And inside of here, we're going to say hello CMake is the main file, and we want to link the library hello. So that's the basic easy syntax. And finally, we want to add this option um, to output the different GNU fl uh, compiling flags. So remember that dash wall, uh, wall is going to display all warnings. So we want that there. Uh, actually, uh, this is add compile options. So this is going to be uh, the command that you're using. Inside of here, we can just specify dash wall. You can also do dash g if you actually don't want it to compile, but only want to see the warnings in case you're only debugging. But I'm just going to specify dash wall for now, for all warnings. And once you have that done, you can save the file. And as you can see out here, we've created a CMake list.txt file. Okay, the text file itself is not gonna do anything. You're not gonna compile it. Uh, CMake is just gonna read that later on. But for now, let's remove the, remove the a.out file. And that is gone. And we're gonna, I'm gonna make two directories called debug and release. So these are not necessary steps, but I'm going to create two versions of my project. One is the debug version that we'll specify and I'll show you how to do later. But in the debug uh, directory, we're going to put the debug version, which is going to contain all the warning information and debug information. So that, for example, if you're sharing this project, and you're debugging the project, other people can see what kind of warnings you got um, so that you can work on it that way. The release version is going to be the one that is going to be 
uh, that, for example, you're going to distribute to other people. Uh, if you've created an app and you want to release it on the App Store, you would then use the release option because that one is optimized, does not contain all the warning options, and will be uh, quicker to run. So now we'll go into the debug directory and inside of here we're finally going to call the CMake and then this is where we're going to set the debug up, uh, flag. So dash d CMake underscore build type equals and then we're going to specify a debug. And then now we want to select a directory. We're going to tell CMake okay which one is the CMake list.txt file that contains all the CMake syntax. And so that's in one directory uh, above. So we're going to go back one directory by saying dot dot slash. And you should be ready to run it. And if we had no warnings within our project, this is going to run correctly. It identified the different compiler and the directory that the compiler was in and did all the work for you. And if you look over here in debug, it created a bunch of files. Now make sure that the make file exists. And the make file is the really the important one. But if you have errors in your CMake syntax, this will not run. And it will give you warnings that you should probably go ahead and fix. But for our case, it worked. So we're going to continue to say make. Now make is basically going to do the final compiling. And if we do make, it's going to show you some colorful syntax. And if it built correctly without any warnings, it should go to 100%. And on the right, it created one executable and one .a file. The executable is exactly the name we specified it to be, which is hello cmake. And then we have a lib hello.a. The .a extension is proprietary to Mac OS. Linux and Windows will have different extensions, so just be aware of that. Okay, now we want to run the uh, uh, we want to run our project. So we're just going to say dot slash hello c make, and there you go. You have hello world outputted to the console. So everything worked fine. If you have any warnings, go ahead and fix those, and then. Uh, go ahead and debug it and now you're ready to release it to the public so we want to go back one directory and go back into the release directory and then in the release directory we're going to do the same steps except now we set the dash dc make underscore build underscore type equals release. This is going to tell CMake that the, uh, we want to create an executable file that is optimized and ready for release. And we'll once again specify where the CMake list.txt file exists, one previous directory, and run it. And this should have no warnings and do the same exact thing. So if you look in release, it created all the files we need to make this project. And now, once you have that confirmed, type in make again. And there you go. So now you have the optimized version, which is going to run faster. For uh, larger projects, this is going to make more of a difference. Um, but I'll just be showing you now. Uh, Hello World is going to print really fast regardless. So in here, we'll type in Hello CMake. And there you go. You have Hello World. So uh, that's it for this video module. I hope that this helped. Uh, please make sure to use CMake uh, when you're compiling your various projects just to future proof your, yourself for um, the industry. Um, many companies like when you are able to use Make, uh, especially um, for larger companies that are doing larger projects. They want you to be able to use tools like this to make the collaborative effort much smoother. Okay. Thank you for watching and see you in class.